Hey, what's up? Let's be honest. The first donut that's getting picked out of the box is usually not gonna be the cake donut. It's gonna be something frosted or filled with jelly. And that's a shame because when done properly, an old fashioned cake style donut can be absolutely deadly. So today I'm gonna show you how to make a tender, moist, craggy and crisp old fashioned style donut at home that will blow away anything filled with jelly or custard. To get started, I'm gonna grab my stand mixer. And if you don't have one of these, that's not a big deal. I'm gonna get to that in a second. Now into the bowl of this mixer, I'm gonna measure one large whole egg, two egg yolks, 35 grams of cubed softened butter and 210 grams of sugar. The pedal attachment goes on and now I'm gonna mix this on medium-ish speed for roughly a minute and a half to two minutes or until the butter has had a chance to become fully incorporated into that sugar. Next goes in 350 grams of full fat sour cream. Yes, that is a lot, but sour cream brings fat and acidity together in one package and more is more as far as I'm concerned. Now the mixer is gonna go back to medium speed and I'm gonna mix that for 30 seconds or until the sour cream and yolk sugar mix come together to form what looks kinda like melty ice cream. Now I'm gonna scrape down the sides real quick and then add 540 grams of strong all-purpose flour, 15 grams of baking powder, three grams of baking soda, and 10 grams of salt. The last mix here happens on low speed. In general, to make nice cake, we really don't want to do any kneading or formal gluten development because that would make chewy donuts. So instead, we're going to mix on low speed just until everything comes together into a sticky mixture. And there we go. Next, I'm going to wrap this tightly with plastic wrap and shape it into a roughly square shape at the best that I can. This is going to give us an ideal starting point for shaping these in a few minutes into perfect round donuts. Once we're there, I'm going to put this donut dough in the fridge to firm up and continue hydrating for at least one hour and up to 48 hours. Now, if you has no mixer, into a medium bowl goes whole egg, yolks, sugar, and butter. But this time around that butter is melted. That's gonna make getting it incorporated properly much easier by hand. Grab a sturdy spoon, stir it all up till it's yellow. In goes the sour cream, stir that till it looks like pudding. In goes the flour, the baking powder, soda, salt, stir it up. And after a few minutes of elbow greasing, we have donut dough. This is just as effective as a stand mixer, but it does take more work. So if you have a stand mixer on hand, that's probably how I would do it. Okay, this dough has been chilling for one hour and it's well hydrated, the fats have solidified, and we have a firm, easy to work with starting point to shape these into dones. To get started, I'm gonna flour everything really well, including the rolling pin, because this dough is quite sticky, as you'll notice. And that's a good thing, that directly equates to not dry donuts later on. The goal here is to coax this dough into a long, narrow rectangle that is roughly 10 inches wide, 18 inches tall, and about a half inch-ish thick. As you go, keep things well floured and kind of use your intuition just to see what works best for you. This is a forgiving process. There's no need to strive for a right angled slab of perfection. Just get it looking kind of close to what I've got here. And when you're there, time to party. To cut this sheet into donuts, I've got some ring molds here. These are cheap and available on the internet. I will link to them below if you're curious. For these donuts, I'm using the largest ring and the innermost small ring. This dough recipe gets us one dozen medium-sized cake donuts, eight of which come from this first rollout. But before we cut these, I'm gonna grab a sheet tray, liberally hit that with some flour, and now, Using this widest ring, I'm gonna go through and punch out eight donut shapes. As I go, I like to dip this ring into some flour to keep it lubed up because as this dough comes up to room temperature, it is gonna get stickier and stickier. And this little bit of flour goes a long way in keeping this ring from getting all gunked. Once these are all punched out, then the middle is gonna get its turn. I don't really care about donut holes personally, so they're just gonna get smashed back together with the rest of this scrap. That's really gonna help us make sure we get four full-size Donnies out of the second rollout. Speaking of scrap, pull back everything that isn't a perfect round donut and then set it aside and transfer the cutout rounds over to the sheet tray. From here, I'm gonna smash all the scraps and donut holes back together into a cohesive mass the best that I can so that I can roll them out again. Same deal as last time, this is just gonna be smaller. You should be able to comfortably get another four rounds out of this mass and once they're rolled out and cut out over to the sheet tray, they go with their buddies. By the way, if you don't have ring molds but you still wanna make a great donut, don't even worry about it. Just grab a wide rim glass and just make sure that it's really well floured and punch them out. To make a hole, just punch your finger through either side and then use your hands to kind of round it off and zhuzh it a little bit. Or if you wanted to be a total freak about it, you could cut this with a knife into a square shaped donut. Once I've got 12 freshly cut donuts on this sheet tray, I'm gonna load them into the refrigerator to stay frosty while I make the glaze and get some oil up to temp. For the frosting, I've got my medium stainless steel bowl set up on a wet piece of paper towel to keep it into place. And into that, I'm gonna measure 175 grams of milk, five grams of salt, and I'm gonna grab 800 grams of powdered sugar. I'm gonna whisk this into the milk in two different stages because if we added it all at once, there's a strong likelihood
hood that clumps would form and that's a huge faux pas. Also, it would probably make a huge mess. Right now, you're probably thinking, hey, Brett, that's a lot of sugar for not a lot of milk. And you're right. It's roughly a four and a half to one ratio of sugar to milk. And that's because I want a nearly translucent, crispy cream style icing glaze on these donuts. Personally, I like that added bit of crunch on the outside when you chomp into an almost crystallized donut glaze. And for a cake donut, I think it's a fun variation on the drag style that is only topped with frosting in the donut shops. Those things are naked on the bottom, they're dry, and they're not very good. Once it's all whisked up and looks good, lid goes on, and now I'm gonna put a heavy bottom wide pot on the stove. This is my six and a half quart Dutch oven, if you're curious, and into it, I'm gonna add roughly two liters or 2,000 grams of frying oil and bring it up to temp over medium heat. Of course, we gotta set up a zone to drop these donuts in once they come out of the fryer, so for that, I've got a wire rack on a sheet tray, and I've got a spider here. This is great for fishing stuff out of hot liquid and oil, and I highly recommend having one if you can get one. They're super fun. Once this oil has been preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 176 C, I'm gonna turn the heat to medium low and in goes the first four donuts straight from the fridge. Lay these away from you as you put them in the oil. That's gonna prevent any splashing. And these donuts are gonna cook pretty quickly, about three minutes in total or about 90 seconds per side. And after that first 90 seconds, I'm gonna use my spider to flip these over. And now is probably a good time to call out the fact that I have put a lot of leavening in these donuts. The reasons here are twofold. Number one, there is a shitload of sour cream in them and that extra powder and soda in there is gonna help keep them from being too heavy and kind of frumpy. And number two, I want well-bloomed craggy edges. A plain round donut is boring and it has no variation of texture and it's not crunchy. As I flip these over after three minutes, you can see that they have done exactly what we wanted. The top side has risen super hard and ripped up to reveal a beautiful, crispy, craggy top that in my mind is the key element for why these cake donuts are so special. Now I'm gonna move these over to my wire rack to drain them off and in goes the next four donuts. If you don't feel like frying your donuts, you could try baking them off to see how you like them. I put four donuts into a 350F 176C oven for 15 minutes and they're pretty good. It's basically like a ring shaped cake and when you put some donut glaze on it, I feel like somebody out there is gonna think that this is a really special treat keep an open mind. Once all 12 donuts have made it in and out of the oil for three minutes each, we're gonna set them aside to cool here on the counter for at least 20 minutes. Some donut shops will glaze these hot right out of the oil, some wait till they're warm. I personally glaze when they have almost cooled completely to room temperature. 20 minutes later, when it's time to glaze these donuts, I'm gonna make sure to check the viscosity of the glaze itself before we go too far. This stuff set up a lot more than I anticipated, and as you can see, it grabs this first donut and pretty much tears it apart when I try and lift it up. So I'm gonna add a splash of milk to get this back into something useful. And now to glaze these, grab a craggy crisp sour cream donut and dip it crag side down into the glaze, push it down, lift it out and let that excess glaze drip off for like four to five seconds and then bring it back crag side up and throw it back on the rack. It's gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes for this glaze to reach its full potential and turn into something brittle. And repeat, the thickness of your glaze can vary. It's totally up to you. I would encourage you to experiment and find what thickness and viscosity you like. But for me, an almost opaque but still translucent white glaze is perfect for these sour cream donuts. Keep in mind that the inside is gonna be super moist and tangy cake and it needs some pretty sweet exterior to balance it out. And let's be honest, these donuts look real dope. In the end, I think that this has all the potential to be a first round draft pick in a fresh box of donuts. It's craggy, it's crisp, it's tangy and rich. It's a true classic. Let's eat this thing. Before I get out of here, a huge thank you to everybody who supports this channel on Kofi. And if you don't know what that is, the link will be down in the description, along with the full detailed recipe, volumetric included in the description. As always, guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end, and we'll see you next time.